bigger than what people say Yahweh 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 We are not just shouting because we are excited for nothing I know I can never be a failure in this life No, no way The glory of God is upon me I arise and I shine Come on prophesy in one minute There's greatness Inside of me I'm a citizen of a kingdom The light of God's glory Is at work in my spirit I'm energized in my spirit Above sickness Above failure There is grace and glory In the name of Jesus Above Satan Above this life I see no limitations no setback. The word of God is my eye. I see reality only from God's perspective. Prophesy. I'm a victor in this life. God cannot fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. God cannot fail. I'm a victor in this life. Anointed by the power of the Spirit. Come on, prophet. Say you are anointed. Call yourself the anointed. The Holy Spirit lives in you. His energy, his ability, his wisdom, his grace. The understanding of the word of God puts you in a position of victory. I am well favored. The hand of God is upon my life. Blessed in the city. So says the word of God. Blessed in the country. His word is upon my lips. Favor is upon my head. I am a victor in this life. I refuse to share. I refuse share. Perfect love casts out fear. For God has not given me the spirit of timidity but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. I arise and I shine, for my light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I dwell in the house of God, and so I flourish in the courts of the Lord. I am not a victim, no. I refuse to be a victim. There is wisdom for me. Go ahead and pray. You are not a confused person. Refuse confusion. For there is a voice that speaks to your spirit man. Directing you. Showing you the path of life. That thy word is a lamp to my feet. And a light to my path. It gives me guidance. Gives me direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I've said it here. A true leader does not maintain followers. He raises other leaders. Are you listening to me? Tomorrow, some of you will be the ones standing in your ministries, in your organization. Our job is to train you, to do a good work and prepare you. Hallelujah. We're not just raising a prosperous people. We're not just raising a people of understanding, a people of power, of grace, of faith, jealous. The depth of your understanding in the word of God is what gives you faith and stability. So that you are unshakable and immovable. Bible says, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. No one can preach me out of this reality. Hallelujah. And tonight, I don't want you to just join the crowd jumping and shouting. Make sure you take the word of God very seriously. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight I'm going to be teaching on spiritual perception. Now I need you 
to follow very closely this teaching because in this prayer series we are going to be activating certain things in our lives that will cause us to walk like kings that we are. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Oh, holy, holy. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 14. Begin our reading from verse 6. Acts 14, verse 6. Hallelujah. We've been teaching... And bringing us into the understanding that we are spiritual people. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches of three classes of people. One he calls the natural man. Now please look up. The natural man, the Bible says, is that man that does not understand the things of the spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit does not live in him. Hallelujah. And if the Holy Spirit does not live in him, the things of the Spirit appear as foolishness. Are you following me now? And so the natural man is the one who is not regenerated, not born again, has not had any encounter with the Spirit of God. The one we call the unbeliever. Then the Bible talks to us about another class of people and it calls them the carnal ones. The word carnal doesn't just mean worldly. It means one who is ruled by his senses. Are you following me now? One whose flesh is the governing factor in his life. So, one who is led by the things he or she sees and hears and your sensory perception. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. He said, for what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh. So the law, weak in the flesh. And so those who are governed by their senses, they are governed by the limitations of this realm, the things that they feel, their perception. Their reality is based on their sensory perception. The Bible calls them the carnal ones. Hallelujah. And it's religion that brings carnality. When people have knowledge, a form of godliness, but deny the power. And then the Bible talks about a third class of people called the spiritual ones. The spiritual ones who, they are the ones who, by reason of an experiential walking with the Holy Spirit over time, have come to a point where they have exalted the presence of God and the word of God, his word and his voice, above and beyond their senses. They have come to a, an experiential reality where the word of God becomes the governing factor of their lives. They are led by the spirit. They are led by the word. The word of God paints the picture of their new reality. Their senses have lost the ability to draw a picture of their future and their destiny. They only see things from God's perspective. Let me tell you something about perception in the spirit. In the physical realm, when you talk to people, they speak to you based on their level of perception, how they see reality. Are you following me now? For instance, in geography, basic geography, they teach us that the sun rises from where? The east. And sets where? In the west. From this plane of reality. That is true. Is that correct? 
But when you go outside of earth, you will know that that reality no longer exists. Is that correct? Based on a new plane that you are standing on, you will see that the sun is not rising and setting. It's static and the planets are revolving around it. Hallelujah. And so we must get to that point where we become spiritual people, not just in word. That the Holy Spirit leads us to a plane in the spirit where we stand from God's perspective and we begin to view life not from the perspective of education and government and the policies of men that come with their frailties and limitations that we stand from His plane and begin to judge things spiritually. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the spiritual man is judged of no man. Because he lives by the word. He lives by the spirit. And so God is helping us so that we will walk in the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. So then walk in the spirit and ye shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. It says for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh lusted after the spirit and both of them are consistently under contention. And so it tells us that the way forward is to walk in the spirit. To live in the spirit. To come to that point where we not only function as intellectual people, but we function as spiritual men. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 14. Verse 6. And they were aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derby, cities of Ly Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about, seven, and there they preached the gospel. Verse 8, it says, And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from birth, who never walked. The same had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now the Bible uses a very interesting word. It says that Paul was preaching. And he saw a man who was impotent. And while Paul was preaching. He turned and he perceived in his spirit. That that man had faith that was able to cause him to be healed. Hallelujah. Spiritual perception. The art of knowing and relating with your spiritual senses. Hallelujah. When you get born again, let me tell you something. To be spiritually dead does not just mean that the Holy Spirit is away from your life. It means that your organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the Spirit have been deadened. Are you following me now? The Bible makes us understand that God designed man to be able to function both in the realm of the Spirit and to function in this realm. Are you following me now? The Bible says that God made Adam, man, dust. And breathed upon that man. The breath of life. The spirit of God. And that man became a living soul. Capable of relating with both realms. Are you following me now? Now when the Holy Spirit left man. What are, it wasn't just that man lost righteousness. But he came to a point where he was spiritually dead. Because the Holy Spirit left him. His organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the Spirit became dead. Are you following me now? That was the beginning of what we call experiment. A true spiritual man does not experiment. Adam named the animal without making any reference to any biological material. The word name the animal does not mean he called lion, lion. It's science that called lion, lion. Adam gave lion its identity. Hallelujah. And so when man fell, he no longer was able to normally relate with the realm of the spirit and interact. His sense of hearing, seeing, perceiving, and knowing. Can I tell you something? In biology, they teach us that we have how many senses? Let's do a quick review. Name them one, two, somebody, uh, what is what's the third one? 
Hallelujah. Basic biology. Now, we are taught that we have five senses. Hallelujah. But in the realm of the spirit, you have more than five senses. Are you following me now? I, I've read books about spiritual senses and people say, you, oh, no, 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 no. There are certain manifestations in the spirit that do not have an explanation in this realm. For instance, what ability of the spirit do you use to know things? You need a mind to know things in this realm. In the realm of the spirit, if you touch a flower in the realm of the spirit, you don't know it by studying it. You have the feeling of becoming that flower and instantly you have every knowledge that you require about that flower. Are you following me now? In the realm of the spirit, there is no time and there is no distance. Are you following me now? These are spiritual realities. You, you do not measure time. You, you cannot measure time. Time is irrelevant in the realm of the spirit. This is why God says a thousand years is like a day before him. So as far as he's concerned, the promises he made in your life, he still made them today. And while you are grumbling and complaining and saying, Lord, five years, God says this is you are talking from a fleshly point of view. When you rise and become spiritual, you will know that it's still one day. God is still faithful. Hallelujah. Because he functions from the realm of eternity. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. The Bible says that he makes all things beautiful in his time. And he has put eternity in the heart of man. And so the realm of the spirit is an interesting realm. In the realm of the spirit, there are no secrets. Are you following me now? No secrets. If we are all to be caught up in the spirit right now, you need to confess and repent and roll on the floor. Because there are no secrets in the spirit. That's why the Bible calls him the father of light in whom there is no shadow of turning. All things lay bare in the realm of the spirit. And every time you begin to, that's where we get the concept of what we call imagination. Comes from the Hebrew word Yezah. The ability to conceive things until they crystallize and become a reality in the spirit. That's how demons and all of these mind readers and sorcerers are able to tap into the spirit. You see, there are several planes in the spirit. The realm of the spirit is not heaven. The realm of the spirit is a spiritual environment that is real, just like this. Are you following me now? So when you get caught up, there are many people who are smiling. They've been caught up into the realm of demons and sorcerers, astrologers, mind readers, and all of these people. They function from the realm of the spirit. That's why they can tell you certain things about your life. Because what you call future, when you go to the realm of the spirit, you find out that it's not future. It's only future according to this realm. That's why God gave us Expo. He says you want to reign in life, see it in the spirit. You will always be ahead in this life and then you reproduce it in this realm. If there is victory in the spirit, then there must be victory in this realm. That's why the kings, every time they would go to war, they would call the priests and the prophets. See in the spirit and tell us, are we wasting our time? Or oh, this is a victorious battle. And the prophets will come and say, I have seen it. There is victory. Hallelujah. But the society has trained us to be carnal people who walk after our senses. And get whipped and punished by the vicissitudes of life. Hallelujah. The realm of the spirit is very powerful. One time I was caught up in the spirit and I looked at people and all I was seeing was light. They were emitting different, different um, magnitudes and colors of light. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he told me this light is the degree and the depth of Christ that has been formed in the people. Hallelujah. And your strength is gauged in the spirit by the degree of light that you emit. That's what we do in quantum physics. When you want to know things about elements, you expose them to light and they reveal certain things. Where did they learn that principle from? Why do you think quantum physics is hard? Because it's an attempt to study realities that can only be explained in the spirit. Don't blame yourself because your lecturer called you stupid. He has not yet come to the realm of the spirit to understand how hard things are. You should clap for me. Come on. I qualify to work as a counselor. 
Hallelujah. There are many of us who, when we get born again and get filled with the Holy Spirit, we are not taught how to begin to interact with the atmosphere of the Spirit. And if you are not taught, you can get into error. Because suddenly you find out that your organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the Spirit are coming alive. And then you do not know how to navigate through the path of the Spirit. Then we begin to hear voices. And have expressions that we cannot explain. And this is why this teaching is preparing us. Are you getting blessed? The Bible says Paul was preaching. And suddenly there was a signal in his spirit man. The Bible calls it perception. The ability to perceive realities. Hallelujah. When you get born again. And the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you begin to pray in tongues. You see, when, for many of us who have been taught that this tongues thing is only raising Pentecostals, you are cheating yourself. There are certain levels of light and glory and power you can never walk in. God gave you the blessings of the gift of these tongues to cause you to activate your organs of expression and interaction in the spirit. Suddenly you begin to pray in tongues. And while you are praying in tongues, suddenly you feel a cool sensation. And you cannot explain, you cannot account for. A few minutes later, your body is burning. What language is being communicated? Suddenly your eyes and your hands, it looks like there is a particular operation of the spirit that causes only your eyes to begin to burn. Lord, what are you saying? What spiritual language is this? What organ of expression is being activated in the spirit? And suddenly you are praying and sometimes you have to turn because you sense you are not alone in that place of prayer. And then you cannot even understand your organs of interaction with the spirit. They are getting enlightened and built and activated by the power of the spirit. And you begin to pray and there is a manifestation and you begin to hear all kinds of sounds. Sometimes you hear voices, choir singing and angel manifestations. You feel oil, crowns on your head. All kinds of things. Fire. Sometimes you are praying and in less than one minute you sit down and fall asleep. And you cannot even explain what happened. It's important that we train ourselves to understand these things. Because these are the weapons of victory in the spirit. And if you do not understand, you will feel that the Holy Spirit is not leading you. Are you getting blessed tonight? Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Perceptions in the Spirit. There are many of us who pray and suddenly you go blank for a few minutes. Then you come back and you cannot even explain what has happened. You just know that in that split seconds, when you start writing what you saw, it will take an hour. And you're saying, what is this? In less than a minute in earthly time, you got realities that will take you an hour. And religious people will say, well, just mind your business with this, your things you are doing. But the Holy Spirit is calling you to understand the atmosphere of the Spirit. When danger is about to happen to someone, somehow there is, an ability of the spirit that is at work in you. And when you train yourself to understand these perceptions, you will be able to flow as a king in this life and in this realm. You will never be taken aback. So when someone comes and wants to do business with your father, the moment you want to move, there it comes again, the spirit. Your organs of interaction in the spirit. No matter what evidences you have, there is. Are you listening to me? If you do not realize that you are a spiritual man, you will be cheated in this life. Because you will miss out on certain things. There, there is a way that the Holy Spirit communicates to me every time I am entering new seasons in my life. Can I tell you something? There is no hard and fast rule into walking in these things. It is a personal product of your dealings with the Spirit. That's why you cannot just write book and a book and say every time you feel it is a healing anointing. No, sir. 
It's true that the healing anointing is associated with it and all of this. You can't just generalize it. You will lead people into error. Because as you stay with the Holy Spirit, He begins to teach you what He will reveal as His impression. He will teach you His language and His code that is customized to just you. And when you stand to minister, that's how sometimes we minister. It doesn't mean we always see visions. There are times that I'm moving and there is an operation and there is perception in my spirit. And I know not just that the anointing is there, but the kind of anointing that is there. And you don't waste your time trying to heal headache when there is an anointing to heal cancer. And then you keep struggling until your spiritual antenna keeps navigating and suffering. Then when you finally hit it, then there looks like a breakthrough. Have you seen people in meetings who suffer and do every spiritual gymnastic? They don't seem to connect. Then it's like an antenna. While they are tuning somehow, whether by mistake or by mercy, they just hit it. Suddenly you begin to see that people get blessed. And instead of the person to go back and say, Lord, let it not happen again. The person laughs and says, wow, that's a powerful meeting. Open your eyes. Open your ears. And soon you understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Then you'll understand that the Lord is here. There are some of us who begin to pray and then you find out that you begin to have strange experiences where you can begin to talk about someone and you are not really seeing any vision in the spirit. Yet you can describe the person with accuracy and detail and his clothes. You don't know where you are seeing from. You just know that you are talking. There is someone wearing a blue dress standing, you weave your hair how you are getting it, you cannot even understand. You are not really seeing any vision. People think you are seeing a picture. You are just, there is an essence in the spirit that cannot be explained in this realm. But it's a tool for interaction. Then you are able to relate with the spiritual atmosphere. And then you speak with accuracy and precision. Organs of expression in the spirit. As I'm speaking to you, God is activating these things because He's giving you explanations. Then, at certain times, you're just moving, and these perceptions do you realize every single one of us in this place? The Holy Spirit has been communicating to you through this means. It's only that we have not been trained to understand that these are the promptings and the communications of the Spirit. This is the first step into the manifestation of the prophetic that you can understand. Your organs of interaction in the spirit. There are times you sit down and many of us suddenly begin to see flashes of lightning in different colors and you do not realize that what you are attempting to see is the manifestation of angels. You don't think you are seeing ribbons moving around. Who told you they are called ribbons? They appear and move so fast. The Bible says, he maketh his angels wings. He uses the word pneuma. Wings. Hallelujah. Spirit of the Lord. Many times, when you are standing and the Lord wants to call you to a place where he will reveal secrets to you, there are ways he begins to lure you. But when your organs of expressions are deadened and they are not trained to understand that the Lord is beckoning on you. The man called Bishop Oyedeko said he was moving and the Lord told him, go to a solitary place. I want to speak to you. How many of us have missed out on secrets that would have been communicated unto us if we only understood that these operations of the Spirit were languages? Paul said there are voices. We have been trained. You see, in this realm, if, if you do not rise above this realm, you will try to relate with the spirit using your knowledge of this realm. There are more organs of interaction in the spirit than we have in this realm. If you can believe that, that's the first step to begin to walk with the spirit. The concept of hearing God and walking and flowing with the spirit have never been a difficult phenomenon. We are just, we just, we, we have not been trained to understand. 
I've said it here. Let me tell you something about the voice of God. Now I'm going to shock many of you. Do you realize that God does not speak what you hear that you think is his English? It's not English. The language of God is light. Are you listening to me? Hmm. Strong presence in this place. The language of God is light. I've explained this, but let me show you. I'll prove it to you scientifically. If you want to send a text message from your phone to this person's phone, what happens? You type the message. When you send it, it goes as what? Help me please. It goes as what? Do you see it? Do you realize that the text you send flows from the realm of the spirit to get to the recipient? We live in the spirit every day and we call it science. The moment is in the spirit, no time and no distance. That's why you can get to London in that instance. Are you following me? You can stay and send, press and send instantly someone at the North Pole will receive an alert. Let me tell you something, follow me. Once it's in the realm of the spirit, time and distance does not exist. But watch this. When it gets to the person's phone, when it gets to the person's phone, listen, the phone has been configured to interpret and convert what that light is saying into a language that you can understand. That's why Russians use handsets. Indonesians use handsets. Are you following me now? So when, how many of you have received text messages and you just saw Jagola Jagola nonsense there? Because your phone cannot interpret. Maybe it's an MMS, but your phone has not been configured to interpret MMS messages. And so, the, the words in your phone will try to downgrade what that light is trying to say as best as it can. And then you begin to see arrows and stars. It's attempting to tell you there is a message, upgrade your phone, and then you will see. Perception is in the spirit. For many times, when he beckons on us, and he's speaking, the insufficiency of the word of God frustrates the manifestation of his voice in your spirit man. And then you are not able to understand what he's saying. That's why people receive half revelations, part revelations. And sometimes God steps in by his mercy to give you pictures and give you words, just a phrase of a song. Or use the phrase of somebody that can be a symbol of what he's trying to say that your spirit cannot receive. spiritual man able to interact with the realm of the spirit when you understand spiritual perception it will be your key to walking away from danger many people suffer because they are trying to heal the sick the bible says that paul was preaching he didn't just blindly get up and say i have faith i'm a man of god he was waiting for these promptings of the spirit that's why sometimes you see us just worship I say, what are these people doing? We are waiting. There is a language. We don't just function foolishly. And then suddenly you hear us say, cancer. Cancer. Why not headache? Cancer. Because over time, when you stay with the Spirit, He trains you. As you build yourself in the place of prayer, this is one of the things that happens. Your organs of expression. There is stamina in your spirit. Your ability to understand and interpret the language of the Spirit. Then every time he gives you those promptings again, then you know that this is what the Spirit is saying. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? I know you've heard this song, just listen to me. How can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? How can you fly? Like the eagle, when you don't know the wind, His power at work in you is changing everything in obedience. There are many of us who were told days before the armed robbers came to your house. You knew it. The Holy Spirit kept beckoning on you. But because we are not able to understand the promptings of the Spirit, there are many times you sit down in the car to go, to go somewhere. And the Holy Spirit begins to communicate to you. When you understand this, you will reign in this life. Are you getting blessed tonight? You better be interested in what I'm saying. So when you pray, 
There is a rising. Your spirit is rising. In science, when, when water gains energy, what happens? It changes state. From ice to liquid to vapor. That's what happens to your spirit, man. When you gain energy, there comes a change of state. And you keep rising to the plain and the mountain of God. And when you allow the Holy Spirit to train you sufficiently, you see a list of job offers and instantly you know which one to go to. Because every time you lay your hands to pray, He begins to lead you. Friends, I hope you know that this is what they do to occultic people. The moment you are initiated, he is not initiated. I'm using him as an example. The moment you are initiated, what happens? They come to you in the night. They are attempting to activate your organs of expression in the spirit. And they begin to show you things that you have never seen. Suddenly you see a lizard. Then you see a picture. You think it's a dream and it disappears. And suddenly you see some people bring you. And then for many people they say, A, a matured man like this. <laughs> they say traveling in what? Granite seed or something. Now... They are frustrating science to make the spirit alive in you. That cannot be understood scientifically. After a while, you conceive it as a reality and you begin to walk in that light. The grandmother in your village sits down and just perceives that your brother is going to excel. And through that perception, they use incantation to confirm it. And sits down there with her old stick and shouts and says, come back to the village and die. And she goes to bed. And the senseless, carnal-minded businessman meandering the streets of London and for reasons you cannot account for, you will take a flight and come back and then you come and die in the village. We are not just raising men of understanding, but men of power. Let me tell you, some of you will rise tonight with an anger because suddenly you will see that so this has been the promptings of the Spirit. Sometimes when you are sleeping, immediately your, your peace is taken away. And it says, get up. Many of you are waiting for, get up, G-E-T-I-T. -E Wait there until your destiny catches fire. And you get up. And then you pray for five minutes and convince yourself you are done. You pray till the promptings change. And sometimes it will take days for it to change. Are you following me now? Thank you, Jesus. There are times that suddenly, for no reason, you find the Holy Spirit calling you and He says, Three days, I want you to pray. At least three to four hours, three days. He's pressing up your spirit for something to come. And then when you hear it, your spirit is alive. You who would have fallen on this news, you stand and you say, No, I know God is alive. Stamina has been built because of the ability to perceive spiritual things. Hallelujah. Paul was preaching. And while he was preaching, his organs of expression in the spirit, his sense of perception, sight and sound, by reason of praying in the spirit, had been activated. And he kept looking at that man. Waiting to perceive. The moment he perceived, he said, that's it. Stand up. And he arose. God's generals. It was said that there was one of them who had an angel who would always come and stand. And if that angel didn't come, he will never do anything. He would just be worshipping and the people would say, this guy, don't waste our time. He says, I cannot do anything. According to the training that was given to me, it was said to me that when I see this angel, it may not be so for you. See, be careful when you read books. Because many people take their spiritual experiences and build doctrines out of it. You are not permitted to build a doctrine out of your experience. You can share it to guide people. But the word of God is the most sure word of prophecy. So I can share with you how I flow in the spirit. I can share with you how I know that this is what God is saying I should do. I can show with I can, you see that the prophets in the Bible operated at different levels and frequencies of perception. Ezekiel would be caught up in the spirit. Then he saw the bones 
And instantly he knew they were very dry. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the Let it cover all the earth. Hallelujah. Interactions of the Spirit. Your ability to perceive realities in the Spirit. When your organs of expression in the Spirit are trained, let me tell you something. You will command power in this realm. So if you are not a man and a woman of prayer, prayer is not an option. Are you listening to me? It's not, it's not something for men of God. You, you want to flow in power. No. You've got to be men and women who understand how to navigate the path of the Spirit. There are many times you enter to pray. The moment you shut yourself, while you are going, bah, 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 God said, ah, I didn't bring you here to pray. Just sit down. Take your Bible and sit down quietly. Or for some of you, God will say, just be walking up and down. Don't pray. Just keep moving. Just stroll. And people see you hold your notebook and you are just moving. And they say, oh God, I'm saying you should pray. You are eyeing me. God is saying, just keep flowing. And while you are flowing, suddenly, you begin to sense the changes in the atmosphere of the Spirit. You cannot explain it in this realm. But you know that this is a journey in the spirit. You may not understand, but you know. You know that you are going somewhere. You are not just moving left and right. You are climbing planes in the spirit. When you get to that place where God wants you to get to, He will say, Now, son, begin to pray, and I will show you something. Suddenly, you begin to pray. Man, tabo, sataya. Then a vision is open unto you, and you will see the room that you were walking to. That just looked like you were moving up and down. And God begins to communicate to you secrets. Bible says the secrets of God are with them that fear Him. And He will show them His covenant. Yahweh. 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 Yahweh, 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 take us to that plane, O oh God. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Yahweh. When you become a man and a woman of prayer, you begin to perceive. You know in the spirit. You cannot tell how it is done. Suddenly you are praying and you are searching for a scripture. And then you just know that it's in Isaiah. How you cannot tell. Sometimes the Holy Spirit tells you, go to Isaiah 6 verse 44. Sometimes he just says, go, just go there. He speaks to you because he's talking to your spirit man. It's your mind that does not know where that scripture is. Your spirit knows. And when you allow your spirit, you will turn to that exact verse. I was searching for this scripture. While I was, I was just preparing and searching for the scripture, the Lord said, okay, let's do a quick training. Let your spirit man take this. I will not tell you the scripture. Don't search for it. Let your spirit man find expression. Suddenly, I don't know how I knew it. I just went straight to Acts chapter 14 and there it was. There are times that people come to cover my eyes and I tell them, don't tell me who you are. I use every opportunity to train my ability to perceive things in the spirit. There are times that you begin to pray and when the host of heaven comes, you know. You know. How many of you have just sat down and then your friend wants to come and cover your eyes and then you just turn. Who told you he was coming? Your spirit man. 
your spirit man your spirit man you are in the room and suddenly you are moving and you just know I'm not alone and then you sense when you train yourself you can know that oh angels are in this room then you suddenly know that no there is a presence these are not angels these are not angels they are beings in this room but they are not angels as you walk around your house you perceive their presence everywhere and you know Kenneth E. Hagin walked in this dimension of perception to a point that he would see the angels he knew them by name and when they showed up in his meeting he would greet them say how are you can you imagine you just drop in your house as soon as you lift your hands to knock the door you know that darkness is over this territory and suddenly you look and you tell your father and you tell your friends there's no time to greet you I'll greet you after three days there is darkness they say what do you mean darkness we are enjoying seriously in fact we just got a break we say that's what you are you are judging as a carnal man I'm speaking to you from the plane of the spirit I do not see light you are celebrating light but what I perceive is darkness let us get to the place of prayer and as we begin to pray in the spirit these mysteries are unveiled to you many of us judge things sometimes Satan deceives you and then when you see a breakthrough, you are smiling in the physical realm. Well, God, how many of you have gotten certain blessings? But there's no rest over that blessing yet. It's not like you know it's God. But it looks like, no, 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 this, this is not all the story yet. Something, while you want to relax, God says, this is not the time to sit down. You just sense it. Many foolish people, that's the time we sit down and cross our legs. When a ministry is expanding and people are coming, my soul find rest. But a man who stays upon the mountain, judges from that perspective. And he looks at that plane and he knows that although this is it, this is what God Yahweh, 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 teach us your ways, O God, teach us your ways, O God, Yahweh. Hallelujah. This is how I receive some of the songs that we share here. I've told you again and again that most of the songs I bring are not composed. As I allow my spirit man to interact with the realm of the spirit, suddenly I begin to hear voices. That's how the song Adonai came. It was a song that I heard the angels singing. Adonai Lamb of God That's why it comes with the touch of eternity You are worthy Worthy of my praise King of kings Lord of lords Let your kingdom reign in my heart Let your kingdom reign in my heart I had an angel sing this song Adonai Sing Adonai Adonai Sing Adonai Kingdom reign. I'm not a superstar. These are realities in the spirit. They are for your reach. When I hear the sound of angelic choir, I don't just hear tenor, alto, and soprano. 
there are a million parts combined together. And that's why, hear me, when the music directors function under the anointing, they begin to put in the parts that can attempt to synchronize. Have you ever worshipped God and you got to a point where you know you are rising in that worship? That's why when you start worshipping God, any mistake will bring you back to that realm. That's why we press for perfection. Because when you begin to worship, suddenly from the corridors of heaven, the saints begin to join in that worship. And there is a union of the families in heaven and the earth. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the saints, they join us in that worship. And there is a strong presence. There are some songs that seem to be timeless. They carry certain anointing and certain presence. You sing them again. Sometimes you don't know all the songs, but that part you know is able to help you relate with the Spirit. When God wants to take you through certain planes, what happens is that He shows you, hear me, He shows you some songs. And those songs are able to help you. They are vehicles of transportation. They are not a means for special number. Every, that's why you see us sing certain songs. And we keep repeating them. Muimaka, 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 sujada, naimaka, ni naimaka, naimaka, sujada, ni naimaka. While you are singing, you do not realize that you are climbing a ladder in the spirit. Your abilities increase. That's why sometimes. You see that the worshippers don't change songs. They keep repeating. They keep repeating. Your flesh may just be singing and is weak. But God is saying, keep singing. You are climbing. The more you sing, you are exposed to a greater dimension of His light and power. Naimaka, sujada, ninaimaka, 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 sujada. Lord, I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. I give you, I give you, I give you. Hallelujah. Spiritual perception. The ability to know, to recognize, and to align with the operation of the realm of the spirit. The voice of the spirit. His prompting, his dealing, his leading. To train your spirit man in the place of prayer. You rise to that plane in the spirit where these operations are no longer foreign to you. So you exist both as a physical homo sapiens and as a spiritual man. There are some of us that when you begin to pray, the moment you are praying in the spirit, suddenly a river of joy breaks open in your spirit. In the darkest of times, physically, suddenly the Holy Spirit tells you, start singing a song of thanksgiving. Start giving thanks. And you say, Lord, for what? I just had a report. He says, see, I'm showing you what is happening in the heavens. And you begin to rejoice. And people say, you are mad. You say, no, I'm not mad. I'm only alike in the spirit. And you begin to give him praise. You give him praise. You worship and you are sweating. You are not praying. You love yourself. You just rejoice again and again. And you rejoice. For the Bible says, with joy shall you draw out of the well. In the realm of the spirit, joy is a fetter. It's not just a phenomenon. 
every time there is heaviness God brings a garment and he calls it praise when the psalm was caught up he saw that praise is not just a phenomenon I saw in the realm of the spirit that the moment they begin to make music these sounds you are hearing they are living things in the spirit they are living things let me show you a scripture Psalm 49 I want to show you a powerful scripture and you understand why we play music as we sing Psalms 49 soon going to rise up and pray I give you the highest high praise I give you the loudest I lift my holy hand I give you I give you I give you the high praise. I give you. I give you the high praise. 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 I need you to know, hear me. You hear what they are playing? These are chords in the spirit. They speak languages. Are you listening to me? So, when a spirit feels keyboard is fit, he begins to play by the spirit. Every key from Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, all of them are languages in the spirit. Your ability to combine the chords, there is a language you speak. Let me show you Psalms 49. But, Three, it says, My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Verse 4, I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open up my dark sayings upon the harp. Upon the harp. There's something I will do to your spirit that every time I hear the harp play, it will position your spirit in a way that you begin to unveil dark things. Bible says, For they know not, neither do they understand. They grow up in darkness, and so the earth is out of course. Have I not said that you are God, and all of you are children of the Most High? It takes the understanding on how to navigate the path and the planes of the spirit. This is what gives victory. This is a tool you need. If you can get this and you can catch this, you can be a victor. No matter what happens, you will emerge victorious. For you will know when there is victory in the spirit. You will know when there is a cause for travail. When you do not understand the things that are happening around you, you will switch to the frequency of the spirit for explanation. What meaneth these things, O oh Lord? And it begins to speak unto your spirit, man. Now as we examine this series on prayer, I want you to pray with understanding. Many people pray foolishly. That's why we do not reap the benefits of prayer. Prayer is not just a sign of spirituality. There's more to that. God cannot be joking with you. He's not playing games. He's not playing pranks. Hallelujah. Perception in the spirit. We live in a day and age where many people just sit down and evil comes to sweep them with no knowledge whatsoever. Not with the spiritual man. Not with the spiritual man. For every time you reign from the heavens and there is a perception. If it is true that you are seated with Christ, it must translate just from confession to becoming your reality. And it's our job in this place to build men and women who are spiritual. 
you don't get spiritual because of ministry when we begin to get spiritual the next thing we begin to envision pulpit no it's the secret for life and in the next few minutes the spirit of prayer will fall upon us let me tell you something i need you to pray in these weeks that we're entering into is a time of prayer there's no room for laziness except you're not interested in growth want your spirit man to come alive you're not filled with the holy ghost right here right now there's no time to do the teaching for you but you will receive there is enough power to get you started we'll explain it later hallelujah so we are going to pray rise up on your feet they quicken us and we shall call upon your name we need a generation of power men who have power with god the miraculous and the supernatural realm was never designed to be for preachers we will cheat you and will be wicked people if all we are interested in is being superstars on stage as you pray hear me for many of you there will be an activation an activation insight in the spirit insight in the spirit sound people i want you to follow me please with the clash of the symbol and every spiritual mystery go ahead and pray if your seat is in convenience to you put it away for the next 15 minutes in the spirit
General, commanding power in the heavens, power in the spirit that you will be an inferno of fire that cannot be touched, not by sickness, not by failure, that you will know the prompting of the spirit and how to navigate the plane. And the path of the spirit. Ramanda <laughs> Power in the heavens, where signs and wonders become our natural life, where signs and wonders come on, pray that you be men of faith when you pray, you will have faith when you pray, 
Build it up yourself on your most holy faith. Build it up yourself on your most holy faith. Build it up yourself. The ability to trust God. The capacity to believe. Trusted in the place of prayer. The capacity to see the unseen. To share the unheard. The capacity to believe God. The capacity to rise above your strength. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hear me. Hallelujah. Listen, friends. Hear me. This is how spiritual men are groomed and trained. This is how men become signs. They don't just manifest signs. They become it. This is how men become men of faith. That they can believe in possible things. When you become a man of prayer, thou die. The capacity to believe God. You flee from danger. Your eyes are opened. Seeing is not a luxury of prophets. It's the heritage of the Son. Sharing is not the luxury of anointed people. For when you pray, the veil is taken from your eyes. Hallelujah. Friends, listen to me. In these next three weeks, I trust that God will enlarge our capacity. You will walk in unusual faith. One of the proof of a man of prayer is faith. You can never truly pray with understanding without being a man of faith. No. Because when you pray, you will hear. And with that share in faith will come. The rhema of God puts faith in your spirit. Hallelujah. I glorify your name in all the earth. In all the earth. Even as we round up, let's give me praise. I glorify your name in all the earth, in all the earth. I magnify your name. I magnify your name in all the earth. Lord, we truly, we truly desire you. We are tired of church. We are tired of a few superstars called men of God standing on stage. We are tired of apostles and prophets making show on stage. We are interested in raising men of power. And oh God, tonight we repent of religion and we pray that you call us to a place of power. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Hear me. Hear me. You will go back home with the spirit of prayer. Hallelujah. These three weeks is a time of prayer. Individual prayer. Don't just get used to corporate prayer partner. You must learn to know the secret place alone. He, not them. He that dwells. 
there are languages God will show you and speak to you in the secret place. Cultivate a personal time. Now is not the time to roam around. You don't generate power like that. You don't sow your way into power. You build your way. Hallelujah. For many of us, as you begin to pray, you will come up with ideas that will end poverty in your life and your family forever. No, it's not, it's not a prophecy. That's a problem with church. There are some things that are not gotten by receiving. They are gotten as a reward for building yourself in obedience. Where that scripture will be fulfilled, that he makes his angel spirit and his ministers flame. I want you to be such a flame of fire. That when you enter your room, any man that does not love God, you don't need to drive and cast. Your presence commands power. I can never run away from a witch over my dead body. And all of this, I, 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 I don't even know anything about witches and wizards. I don't, I don't, it's not that I'm not, I'm careless. The most important thing I need to know about them, I already know that I have victory over them. Do you realize that the success of these meetings are riding on the wings of prevailing prayer? Not carelessness and wearing suit and crossing our legs. It's not the time. It's the time for business. It's the time to raise others. I saw one of our ladies. We were in Mina. We just came in today. We went to minister. And I saw her glad to know that we have built her to become a woman of power right now for reasons they cannot explain god just promoted her and she's now the secretary to the nyse coordinator for no reason when you command power with god you will flow in this realm friends don't let anybody deceive you you need to build capacity in the spirit the secret for a victorious life for the work that God is committing unto you is great. And you need great energy. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. When you pray in the spirit, you can stand criticism. You can stand pressure. When you give in too easily, you are not a strong man in the spirit. When you give in too easily, trying to explain to everybody, Ah, I meant this. Ah, ah. Build capacity your father looks at you and says you're a failure just smile there's no point going back to cast any devil where we become strong men in the spirit when they that cry will now be the comforters because of the strength that you have God will show you things and you will save people from catastrophe God will take your eyes and show you the treasures in darkness and the hidden riches that are in secret places and then, with the Spirit, you will do business in the deep waters. And you will not need to go down to Egypt for help. Because He will show you the treasures that are in the waters. Help us tonight, O oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Help us. Cause us to be men of power. Cause us to be men of power. Now is not the time to build titles. Now is not the time for ministry. Now is not the time for ENI. Are you listening to me? Now is the time for business. The business of building people. I don't know where I'll see some of you tomorrow. But one thing I know is that within the time that we have, we will do the job that God commits to us. So that when you become an overseer in your ministry, when you become a leader, we are certain that an ambassador is there for you. Hallelujah. And as surely as the Lord lives, He will honor our desires. Lord, we thank You. We thank You for the privilege of building ourselves in the Spirit. Lord, I pray that we will leave this place with a true spirit of prayer. Prevailing prayer. Prayer that brings results. That we will command results in our lives. Lord, as we pray, we pray 
open us up. Let burdens be lifted. Let mysteries be unfolded and uncovered. Let the communications of the Spirit be effectual in the place of prayer. Brothers and sisters, this is the time for prayer. Read your book. Have your lectures. But the time that you have, invest. Invest. In these three weeks, God is going to be putting something in you that will be relevant for your destiny. The training of a general is not without tears. Don't expect me to, to massage you. I don't want you to be a weak and a beggarly person. I want you to be strong and to command power. The day that know their God, they shall be strong. They are the ones who will do exploits. Has nothing to do with your age. Has nothing to do with your gender. Not everybody will be relevant in the program of God. But as many who can pay the price, you will conquer death. You will stop fearing death. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. 